This is when I should hit the button that says leave meeting. When it says recording in progress, it pops up a window and says, got it or leave meeting. <laughs> so I had a choice and I could have yeah. left. I appreciate you staying there. Works better with you. And I saw Meg walk in like five minutes ago. So okay. good, good, good. Can you raise your chair or lower your monitor a little bit for me? Wherever you're comfortable. There you go. Shall I blur my background? No, leave, leave. I love your background. Your background represents who you are. That's, yes. that's what we want. Yeah. Now you just have to see. Whoa. Oh, God. Oh, I'm my God. <laughs> Meg, so you have until uh, 1230 today? <laughs> <laughs> no, you get no more of my time. You get All right. 30 seconds. Yeah. Let's go. How are you? Good. How are you? I am very good. This is what I wake up for to have conversations like this. So I appreciate you taking this time. Yeah, happy to. And I have a hair oh. on my tongue and those don't go well with talking. So that's uh, what happens when you have a giant beard on your face. I don't even know. So first of all, I just want to take a minute. Yes, we're recording. Yes, this is something we're doing. But Meg, on a genuine, sincere level, we are so, uh, so grateful for the relationship that we've established. And the beautiful thing about taking some purposeful time and like looking at something like this is you actually, if you do a little bit of homework to see where you kind of connected with somebody and where that path led, that's where the real beauty comes. So it was June 16th, 2020. You had a son that was five, a daughter that was two. You had beer that was being brewed for your brewery in your basement. You had a different role that you'd been in for about a year. Mr. Durkin had been in his new role for about a year. Mike and I decided we needed to do a little bit of networking via Zoom because that was our only our only choice. And you were kind enough to come on and spend some time and tell your story. I said to him yesterday, I'm like, we should watch that video. And he's like, no. And then he watched it. And then this morning he had the date the fact that you were brewing beer in the basement that was before the brewery that was a, a year after i got here and we fast forward to today and you think about all the connections we've made and all the progress that you've made with the company and our new headquarters which brings us to why we're here today and that is really highlighting arthur and matt so it's super awesome wanted to kind of tell you a little bit about the story of Arthur and Matt and how we, but it, it really, <laughs> it really comes from you guys, right? So if you would just kind of, you know, fill in the blank at a high level, you know, mm -hmm. in the last three and a half years, just what's, what's been happening and what's going on. And, and we'd love to hear that, that part of your, uh, your story. Gosh, so to your point, so much has happened in the last three and a half years, but predominantly, you know, I think the biggest thing for the company and, and where, you know, Mike made made a solid point is our move into the space. So I'm super excited to talk about, you know, that and, and how it ties with Arthur and Matt and, and everything that works there. But you know, I stepped in from the chief operating officer role into the CEO role and we've actually moved into a proper brewery space and we're moving to our second space and Andy's brewing and doing his thing there and, and you know, he's he's absolutely killing it. I can't say enough about the work he does. And we've gone through, like Mike said, a ton of changes here at the company, but what has set the tone for those changes, in my opinion, the biggest tone is the space and the intentionality behind the decisions made within our space, which is why this is a compelling story and something I'm super excited to be a part of today to, to talk about with you. The story of our space and how we ended up here was when the conversation about 81 started um, and what was going to happen with 81 in Syracuse, there was this concern and a very real concern. There were a lot of buildings, uh, beautiful old historic buildings that were actually slated to come down in one of the plans for 81. And having some foresight um, back all the way back to 2016, we recognized that there was a chance that our old building, one Webster's Landing, um, was going to actually be taken down. And we knew we had to really start thinking about what that meant for us as a company, but it also is a huge opportunity. So before, you know, we are four operating companies all under one roof. And in the old location, we were companies that were separated by floors with one floor as our admin floor. Um, and so we had to go up and down and, and communicate with the other companies that way. And so we knew there was a huge advantage to be gained for us being on a singular floor plate. And it just so happened that at the time we knew our building might be coming down, that the post standard building uh, became a potential viable option for us to develop. Um, and in that space, we knew we could feasibly move there um, and, and achieve what we were really looking to do. 
we were talking about the design of our space three years prior to even really beginning the design of our space. We knew we wanted to be downtown. That was crucial. We knew we really wanted to be in the heart of downtown um, and, and the coast gave us that opportunity. Uh, we actually chose the first floor. You know, a lot of times people want the second or the third floor. Um, it was an intentional decision to choose the first floor because we really wanted to be um, at really the community level, to be able to uh, experience community in that way um, and be able to see in and out of our space. We asked our employees, what do you want to see? And it was really imperative that we incorporated everything that our employees wanted to see into the design of our space. Um, but one thing that was really near and dear to my heart, just based off of our history and who we are, based off of the way that Syracuse embraced Dave and embraced this company, um, we knew we wanted to get the community involved in different capacities. So what we did is we knew we wanted furniture that was designed by some of local um, artists. We knew that we wanted um, to really use hyper-local companies to partner with us. Can you talk about the partner that you did select for furniture? Uh, yeah, we used ROI. And so ROI is a phenomenal company here locally. They were able to partner with us in a really tremendous way. And we started before they knew about the post building. You know, it went from potentially renovating the floor that they were on and, and Webster's Landing, and then it turned into this wonderful idea of the post building, which you know, got very exciting. VIP does this every day, so it's like it, working with a customer like that makes it 10 times easier. The team was great. Um, we worked closely with Gary, who was the site superintendent, and it, it, it all went very smoothly. They were so patient with us. In the three years it took us to finally design and move into this space, they went through, I mean, probably 10 different furniture layouts with us that we went through and found epic picking process of furniture. They hung in there, they checked in with us, they made sure we were good to go. So Meg, Dave, they know what they want to end up with. And they, I think they really wanted a space that people wanted to be in. And they were very concerned with natural light and, and letting and sharing the light, okay? And typically, you know, when I started in this business, the, the important people were all on the outside of the building, okay? And they stole a lot of light for themselves, right? And then the people on the inside of the building got no light. And they were they said, we want people sharing the light from the windows. And that's why there's so much glass. That's why there's so little height in the workstations. So somebody sitting in the middle of that building can get some of that light. They wanted everybody that works there to share in it. Sometimes you can spend a ton of money on a space and you can spend a ton of time on a space and it, it can look beautiful but you don't get that feeling when you walk in you walk into that space and there's a feeling it's a special space and i i wish i could take the um credit for it and i and, and sometimes i do but that was uh that was vip and their team they just they put a beautiful plan together a great space and a great group of people just a wonderful customer to have. If you follow me on LinkedIn, you can tell how proud I am of the space. I use it, every little angle of it. Um, just love the feel of it, love the way it looks. And just put, uh, VIP had a great team working on it. And uh, we we just became part of the VIP team. And uh, they, they led us in the right direction. You know, I, I think a lot of other companies may have said enough is enough. You know, right. we're two years into this process. And you guys still haven't decided what you're going to do, but they hung in there with us and we're tremendous partners. That's awesome. I just like to hear how the, you know, the local economy, local community supports something. You know, you see the building come to life. I, I did kind of saw it come to life from a, from a distance, so to speak, seeing it come from bare bones to fruition. Um, it's kind of cool to hear how it, how it pieced in uh, along the way. So with that, uh, we were at the ceremony for the post. We were blessed to be a part of, of that with you guys. And, and then up, leading up to it, we saw the, the murals and uh, I, you know, the colors, the just the the look of them was so inspiring. And I had no idea how they how they came to be. I knew I, just, I, mean, I got it philosophically. You want something that was going to be positive and vibrant for your your culture. So if you could kind of tell us, you know, the story of 
how those came to life in terms of uh, concept and what they meant and how it got started and, and tell us that story. That'd be awesome. We went through this process uh, a couple of years ago. We changed out our Christmas cards. And what we did is we started inviting youth artists from the Syracuse community to come together and give potential designs for those Christmas cards. But it was actually that process that was something that had been set in motion by our great marketing team here at the company. That I saw that process and thought, wow, it'd be great if we could apply that same standard, sort of say, this is what we're dreaming of, what would you do? Um, and then be able to pick some, some folks accordingly. So we adapted that same approach. So if you come into our office, which you've seen, super neutral palettes. That was really intentional. Like we don't have giant pops of color by way of like the furniture choices or, or uh, paint colors. We have, it's a, it's a very neutral space and that was super intentional because we wanted the murals to be the piece that really pops when you get to that side of the space. Um, and so what, so what we did is um, we said, okay, let's put on an RFP. And we received in that RFP 11 responses our marketing team and a few others got together um, and had a subcommittee that of those responses said, okay, we, we really like these. Let's dig in some more here. Let's ask the artists some questions here, see what their thoughts are there. And the way that those responses came in was, was truly just saying to them, this is our history. This is who we are at our core. This is our future. What do you think this mural should really represent? And, and, and how do you think that this should come forward? And we really wanted to give artists carte blanche to come up with their concepts and ideas and present them to us. Um, and so that's what we did in that RFP. We said, here's who we are, here's where we're going. And then we sat down and had some other meetings with that base. Every decision that was made regarding the design of our space involved way more people than myself. It involved committees and subcommittees and surveys and uh, all sorts of different uh, avenues. So this was very much indicative of that same process to make sure that we weren't putting something up that our employees walk by every day and thought, ooh, I don't, you know, do I love this? How do I feel about this? We really wanted people to buy in and be a part of the process. So what I thought was really interesting is that when we were doing our call with Arthur and Matt, Arthur was he like just recited back to VIP's vision and he referenced the three better ways? You know, I liked the vision statement that you had. What's a better way forward for our people, our planet, and our community? That was like, for me, the golden concept because that's what I really I want the same thing as well. And um, I know personally for me, that has come through me really understanding who I am as a person. I, I call it the inner world concept, where when you know who you are and what you're about, you can have a purpose that can help other people. And if you have a lot of people like that, if you have a whole team like that, then you can change the world together. So I kind of was able to merge my personal concept about that with your vision statement. That's how I ended up with the, the profiles that are all linked by their inner worlds and they come together. It's, it's so perfect for this concept. Our tagline for a long time uh, was a better, we, in actually 2015, we adopted the tagline, a better way to build. And as I stepped into the position of CEO and we worked through the, the multi-generational uh, family transition and ministry to think about the future, um, my role is to say, okay, here's the 45 years, 46 years of history, now 48 years of history, what what now? Where are we headed? What does this look like? And what is the purpose of this company that's so much bigger than just the design and the construction of a project? And what is that bigger impact that we need to have? And so our three, you know, really the, what he's referring to is, is what people have heard me say, what we have up on a wall now, that is our purpose is to find a better way uh, for one another, for the planet, and for our community. And in explaining that, the way I, I view it is this. So when I say for one another, you know, and a better way can mean many things to many people. Um, but our space is as truly indicative of these three pieces, and that's really what, what we wanted. Um, 
So when I say better for one another, it's how we as a, as a company are interacting together. How are we building each other up? How are we making sure that we have a space that allows people to do their best work? And how can we also recognize that, yes, our people are here to do a job, but they are so much more than the job that they do every day. And we have to recognize that and we have to support them in that and we have to help them remember that um, when things get really tough, that a job is just a job um, and life is so much more important. And so how do we make sure we create that better space for them and support them? It's amazing. Sustainability has become a polarizing term in many spaces, and it can mean many, many different things. But when we say a better way for the planet, my goal is to highlight to folks when they come into our space, and again, I'll use our space as a way of talking about it. What are the small decisions that we can make every day that if you keep taking away at these will have a big impact overall? So everything from the compost program to having no single-use plastic in the space to um, having um, you know daylight harvesting lights. These are all options that are, in the scheme of things, cost neutral. And how can we keep presenting them to people so that they too can find the small ways that they can impact their businesses and what they are doing, both in their design and their culture. And then, you know, a, a better way for our community. We would not be the company we are today, again, if Dave didn't get the support that he did. 48 years ago in the Syracuse community. It is our job to support the community and bring the community in in any way that we possibly can. So some examples of that are exactly that, the murals, or the beautiful 15 foot long walnut table that is from a tree that came down from a local church that was designed just for our space to making sure that we have the apple, which is our community space in which not for profits can come in and use that space right free for their events. Um, so we are constantly just trying to figure out how do we give back to the community and what does that mean. So that's really the ethos. That's what we had a conversation of having, uh, or had a chance to have that conversation with Arthur. Um, it was one of the things that when we really decided to, you know, drill down into that second round of, of murals and talk to folks, he got it. His mural shows it. You know, it shows the beginnings, even all the way through Syracuse's Salt City, and then you know, where's that? What's that mean for the future? And and, and really thinking. Um, the, the, the brightness that can exist and how does technology impact that and what does community look like within that. For all intents and purposes, we are a company that designs and builds buildings, but what is really imperative that we recognize is that every single decision we make has an impact and we have to decide what kind of impact we want to make in that space. And that means that every building we design and build needs to make sure it's taking into account the surrounding communities, the human beings that will actually inhabit and exist within those facilities. What those facilities, what kind of impact those facilities will have on the environment and what kind of impact the construction of those facilities will have on the environment. We just, we have to think bigger than just creating buildings yeah, to get a bigger. job done look bigger yes. by looking smaller right and it's a it's a yeah. great opportunity because you mentioned like the fine details and the small effects and just as a to weigh in as a person that's been in your building and also to bring in someone into this part because it's it is arthur's artwork but it's the medium the special unique medium is uh, arthur and matt from a m graphics putting this together so even in the restroom right when you're in the restroom and you're looking um, on the that the at the signs on the wall talking about the statistics or the numbers associated with how many gallons of water and the equivalent to the gallons in Onondaga Lake, like it gives you a mental as a guest. I'm just I'm just weighing in as a guy that's using the restroom yeah. here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> really intimate part of our conversation. But let's face it, like you guys are designing buildings for people, and you have people coming in to utilize your space. If they're there and they can see what you're doing by someone like Matt from a and putting these little graphics that kind of spell out the thought that you guys took, the time that you guys took to make this be what it is and to show an impact. It's um, it's synonymous with your message. It's just kind of, the message just keeps pouring out of the next part of it and into the next part and so it's continues. So I love it. So thank you. Wayfinding, by the way, wave, a wayfinder, Meg had no idea what that was. I've seen them gazillions of times throughout facilities in my in my time running around the world. Um, but on one of our calls, Mike and Matt were talking about wayfinding, like they knew what it was. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? They're like, science it show you where to. I'm like, oh, like, of course, yeah, like duh. But regardless, helps I'm you find your way, Pete. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, well, I need every possible help I can get. So um, I love that. And um, if you could just tell me kind of in, uh, in, in the process of when the selection was, can, if you can go back to where your brain was when you, you know, when you're looking over Arthur and Matt's work and really kind of, and that decision was being made, can you just kind of speak to what, what you felt? Maybe it's mixed with what you feel today, but just kind of share what, what it made you feel and, and then uh, how that became part of what your culture is. You know, if you really look at the piece that he put together, it's the colors, it's the it's the it's the timeline. You can see the timeline in there. You can see the diversity. You can see the sustainability, the inclusion. I mean, he just he really thought intentionally about all of it. Um, and what we really loved was was originally just the art, and then Arthur came in. And Arthur came in and had more ideas. He had clearly sat in it and then thought even more, well, what if we did this? Then we talked for almost two hours. And then he had even more ideas. It was like, what if we did this? And what was really cool is his medium gave him the ability to do that. You know, it really gave him the ability to dive in digitally, make his adjustments, make his enhancements. He knew with Matt and Matt's team, because that partnership has been in place for so long, that he had people he could count on to help him have his dream based off of what our dream is become this incredible reality. So it was the confidence that went beyond just, okay, we saw the art first, the art was there, then it was the conversation, then it was the adapt adaptation of that medium, the ability to make those changes. Also his confidence in the team that he had with AM to take that dream and make that a reality and to really figure out what does this look like and what are the final touches on it. Um, so it was this beautiful sort of sequence of events that brought us to where we did, down to watching it get installed. I mean, to be able to stand there and watch what Arthur did and, and working with them and, and how does this graphically lay out and what's it look like, and to actually see them installing it um, and, and to see them excited as well. I just, it was awesome. It was just a really, really, really great process for us. That's cool. Yeah. There's one word that keeps coming back to me and and I see it and I hear it every day, but I it's really calling it to me today, hearing Meg's words, intentional. Just, I am not, I don't have that creative mind, but to have the vision, the leadership and the intentional delivery, whether it's the live plants or the murals or the muted color schemes or whatever it is, the intentionality that Meg brings to the company is amazing. And then it just allows those contractors, subcontractors, vendors, partners, consultants, if Meg's intentional with what she's doing, those experts can be intentional with their delivering back. And it just, it feels right. And for Arthur to grasp the, the the better way that Meg says every day, he picked right up on it. And that mural, I think, was created because he could totally understand Meg's intentionality of a better way for our community, a better way for our people, and a better way for our planet. I'm convinced that you know we're all connected. You know, we're one we're one organism living in separate places uh, on some level, right? And hearing Arthur's words, not only is he an amazing artist, but he has an amazing way to articulate the message about the process of how he arrived there and how the artwork is really the vehicle that gives him the understanding of, right, Mike? He said, he's like, I don't even know what I'm, I don't even have a vision when I start it. He's like, I start it and it turns into what it's supposed to be through the process. It's impressive, so. So Pete, Pod commentary. Yeah. I think you just mentioned it a minute ago. I don't think I've shared that term with Meg yet. Maybe I have, but um, so we're doing a pod commentary on Matt and Arthur and, you know, what they've done in Auburn with the Harriet Tubman wall mural. Meg, I don't know if you've seen oh, yeah. that, um, yeah. what they're doing right now for Syracuse Community Health Center. They're going to have a fantastic graphic up front. I don't think it's done yet. The whole point of this thing, the city keeps getting smaller. Would you introduce me on camera to the other artists? Absolutely. So um, Jackie Colello, you should absolutely, we can make that connection for the two of you to make sure that that happens because she is a 
you know, and, and again, very similar, and you could tell, I mean, with, with, with Arthur and his personality, like I said, it was first his art and then his personality that got us, and Jackie is the same. It was first her art, and then we met her in person, and we're like, this yeah. human's amazing. Her work is tremendous. Similarly, you're going to see it more and more around the city. One just popped up, a, you know, a couple streets over here, and San Francesca, and, and a bunch of other places. So um, there's that. There's there's another great artist with a really really interesting um, backstory. So we'll make yeah. that connection. You definitely reach out. Yeah, because I, I making the city smaller has been you know had heavy focus on B2B networking, right? That was cause that's what we started. But at the same time. I think as a culture, community culture, in our um, our spotlight on different parts of it, I want people from outside the area to see the art and to see the you know the different things that make this area beautiful. Other than just the conversations with leaders, I want them to also see what what keeps people here and what makes these amazing organizations thrive because of the other things that happen that aren't in the nine to five time slot. If that makes sense. Well, and I also think I mean you're hitting on. That's why we designed our space the way that we did and why we got and we wanted to have so many community artists be a part of our space because I think it's that you look at any city and you look at any city who has seen a renaissance and you look at any city who's seen the sort of infusion of dollars and companies and people coming, at the heart of the most successful cities is art and culture and vibrancy and creativity and all of those things because in that comes community and in that comes you know that's where new americans you know get to share their culture and their space i mean that it is truly the fabric of those communities so i think you're on to something i really yeah. do i have an obscure question have you been to greenville south carolina no i have not if you get a chance uh okay. music art just they've incorporated food. this culture who oh my god yeah yeah yes um we went to a wedding there this past uh last couple months and we went in and spent some time there's waterfalls come down through there's live people live music and every saxophones guitarists violins and then art galleries and you know food every version of art bookstores they're just really cool i mean cool space for kids adults so if you ever anyhow i'm not i'm not on their payroll for the tourism board for greenville but (laughs) apparently i should be love it when Kate and I went to Hilton Head last year, we stopped in Greenville. I th- might have even sent you like picture or photo that Saturday morning. They have a park right downtown where there's water and dogs and farmers market and music and Greenville's really cool. Pete, real quick before we let Meg go, um, Stephanie. The other day we bumped into Meg when we were here and. Meg met Stephanie or oh, Ree met oh, Stephanie and met Stephanie, we were like, yeah. what are you guys up to? And I said, ah, we're working on something. So we've brought Stephanie in because she's a grant writer and we're going to try to figure out ways for nonprofits to apply for grants to pay for their episode or pod commentary. And um, so Stephanie and Tim Giarusso and Pete and I are getting together in June. No, next Friday here at the post and just talk through the logistics of a grant for uh, human technologies so they can tell their story. Love that. I think it's great. Yeah. And it might be a supplement, you know, and, you know, we have, we've been creating content via this platform for other businesses um, through Penview Events and Media. But ultimately, like Mike said, like, I want, I want this thing to take a serendipitous kind of path. Like if you introduce us to this person and then Arthur and then who Arthur, you know, the we're tracing back because this is this is networking. Like, mm-hmm. call it a documentary, you can call it anything you want, but it's networking, right? Mm-hmm. So, I want to be able to tell we want to be able to tell the story in 20 years of making the city smaller via video content. And in some instances, I don't want to ask somebody who has a cool story or is an amazing person for, for dollars for doing that. I want, I just want to work off the genuine nature of their story and then have that be the, the fertilizer for this thing, not who's willing to pay us money to do it because that's going to be icky. I want to feel good about what we're our path and what we're what we're doing to um, as a mission, so to speak. So mm-hmm. I don't know what the hell we're doing, Meg. We're just figuring out as that's we go. That's the whole point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
the best things come from this place of like, let's do a thing, see what happens. Yeah. And then looking back several years later and being like, oh God, we did a thing. Maybe we don't do it that way anymore. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was this morning when I was watching your last episode. <laughs> you listen to anybody who's got successful podcasts, they'll talk about the first few and they're always like, oh. Yeah. I leave them up because someone else that is that I've watched in that same space was like, mm-hmm. you know, it shows your it shows your growth and and why yeah. hide it right like show where the roots were but we've had we've made several jokes that you know when there's a technical issue or something goes completely wrong um, we're like this thing came out of you know the grassroots of a pandemic like it, this is yeah. what it is it doesn't matter it's good we're all good so I really 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 appreciate you guys or both you um, and and Meg your time Mike I value your time too but I tell you all the time so um and I did get one of those cards by the way I want to just tell you um so I saw I was telling Mike this morning we're we got 30 seconds okay um I saw your I think on LinkedIn at one point you guys put out something kind of showing that I believe this is what this is what my memory says it could be a complete lie I saw it somewhere that you were doing these cards with you know children being the artists and it philosophically and instinctively like that's that's cool right but it was just on LinkedIn or something that then I got one yesterday seeing it firsthand seeing it from someone that uh I care a lot about sending a message and then seeing this little child's beautiful art by the way and just the message and then how it you guys tastefully put yourself you know in that where it's not about you it's about the community and I just thought it was awesome to see it it, was, it felt different getting one that did just seeing it so for or whatever, for whatever testimonial that is for you guys <laughs> but I appreciate your time and I appreciate your words. And Mike, I'll let you uh, let you wrap on your end. Pete, we appreciate you. We do. I You're... that is yes. Yeah, but you have no idea how much a part of a fabric you and Bernadette have become. You have through our yeah, events have, and yeah, you have through this platform. This and... Yeah. Well, I can't you. agree more, Mike. Like I and I'm, I, you know, I hesitate because I know you you recording you got things going I know you you know stuff happening but you know Pete you have genuinely impacted this company in a beautiful way you and Bernadette have it's not just again it's not just the cards you send or the events you plan or the food you guys help arrange or any of those things at the end of the day it comes down to the presence of you and Bernadette and how comfortable everybody feels around you um, and the role that you've played here and, and, you know, the role that, you know, Mike played in that connection and, and as always being sort of the, the epic connector that he is yeah. uh, of this universe. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely. But we are exceptionally grateful. And I apologize, Mike, I know you were supposed to be wrapping it up, but I just couldn't help myself but say thank you because I haven't really had a had an opportunity or a platform. Otherwise. Yeah, you guys, you guys make it easy. The um... Uh, the culture there, you know, I do, I've interacted with over a hundred different people that worked. I don't know your exact head count at the moment, it's probably changing as we speak, but everybody from frontline guys and gals to sea level people, everyone treats us exactly the same. It's like family. So that's good to hear. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Pete. Yeah. And you've got 10 minutes to get to your next meeting. Mike, yeah. thank you for being an epic cheerleader for us as always. You I love are- it an amazing human being. Thank you. It's fun. You both have a good day and have a great holiday. Thank you. All right. Talk soon.